Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued blind let's play of Homestuck for the PC. My name is the Flightless Bird, this is your Soybeans Cover Channel, and as you can see, page 4112, the end of intermission 2. The scratch has happened, there's a lot of stuff that happened. Oh my god, the last episode was absolutely in insane. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what goes next. So. Let's get to it, shall we? I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. As we begin Act 6. Reminds me of the beginning of the game with zooming in the town. Sus occurs. Hey, it's Liv Taylor. Or Tyler, sorry. Oh my god, they made a movie. I'm disturbed. I wonder if it starts Bed Stiller. That movie needs to start Bed Stiller. I want to say that's Jade, but it very well could be our ancestor. Because the scratch did happen, right? Which means, don't they swap? Oh, the weird writing? Sure, why not? Yeah, okay. Let's go. It's 4,114. Alternative translation. Click to continue. This and previous page. Homestuck. Aww. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe we are. Uh, I believe we are going to be getting a uh, a reboot here. And um, she looks adorable. A young lady stands in her bedroom. It just happens that today, the 11th of November 2011, is a date scheduled for launch of a highly anticipated playtest experience for a much anticipated game. The young lady is expected to find this game in her mailbox today. She is expecting to get enclosed in a pair of envelopes and printed on these envelopes she is expecting to find her name. What do you suppose the name on the envelope will be? Enter name. Jane Crocker. You cannot enter her name. 
was already engraved in an honorary plaque on him on her 13th birthday, which was about two and a half years ago, and has been sitting here neatly on the bookshelf ever since. Attempting to crave it with another name after completing the sacred rite of passage is practically unheard of, and is a gesture nearly as offensive as it would be if you tried to name her something dumb like, I don't know, Barn Stench Fart Face. <laughs> Luckily, she is not the sort to hold a grudge, and she will let it slide this time, as long as you hurry up and get her big day started. Jane Crocker. Huh. Oh, there's that picture. So she's a Watchmen fan. November. Hey, look, it's the suburb calendar. The hat. Suburb. Your name is Jane. As was previously mentioned, you are poised for an elite opportunity to take the suburb Alpha. It's so elite, in fact, you are the only one of your kind invited to playtest. Though you guess that probably comes with the territory of being the heiress apparent to a baked goods empire. You don't suppose it hurts that you are said empire's number one fangirl either. Should come as no surprise that you enjoy baking, but you also adore reading detective stories. You fancy yourself a skilled pranksteress, if by no other measure than lineage. Though at times you feel it's tough to fill those shoes when you are surrounded by jokers. Seriously, the shenanigans perpetrated by your pals make your old school japes feel kind of pedestrian sometimes. But oh well, I mean you love them all anyway. You once dabbled in amateur botany, but you found it too frustrating because your vegetables kept disap- Actually, you know what? You don't want to talk about it. You love situation comedies, while it's holding particular affection for mustachioed funny men. You know your Foxworthies, your Funkies, your Swansons, but not necessarily your Gallaghers, per se, because you have to draw the lines somewhere. You're also pleased to contemplate the fighting fauna, though saddened by the regrettable fakeness attribute. But none of that's on your mind now, because you are psyched about this special date. 11, 11, 11, i.e. 2x3 Pong Day, whatever that means. <laughs> A date exhibiting just the sort of numerical gimmick corporations love to exploit for the big releases, or for launching major rebranding initiatives. In the case of your cherished multi-global empire, both such events are slated to happen today. You can't wait to see what is in store and for all the mail to come. When it does, you will waste no time in embarking on the game's maiden voyage. And if even a fraction of what you heard turns out to be true, you are prepared to have the time of your life. What will you do? I want to go back really quick just so I can write down her name uh, because I do take notes, even though my notes are rather useless at times because everything happens in this game just so fast and everything. By the way, her name is Crocker after Betty Crocker, right? Um, all the trolls had six letters on each of her names. She does not, uh, but she does have four letters in her name, which is similar to all the other humans that we met so far. Quickly retrieve the arms from chest. Jane is a... Whoa. What the heck just happened there? John? No, it can't be John. Jane is not empowered to rehash this tired running gag because all of a sudden she is too busy being the other guy. We need to figure out what this fellow's name is. Pronto. That just flipped. So we have Mystique, Tomb Raider. Uh, is that Weekend at Bernie's? Yeah, I think that's Weekend at Bernie's. What a great movie. Uh, I don't know what this one is. Uh, maybe an Aliens movie. i um, not sure what that one is. Incredible Hulk magazines on the floor. What's her name? Jake English. Oh my gosh. His name is English. Ooh, creepy. Also the same amount of letters as Crocker, and Jake is the same amount of letters as Jane. Once again, you make the incalculable blunder of attempting to engrave a, an already allocated placronym. His name was etched when he turned 13 too, almost three years ago. So these guys are a little bit older. It's been sitting here messy in this unbelievably deadly pile of guns ever since. What sort of vulgar, childish moniker were you going to stick with this poor bastard with? Barf, breath, turd, smirk? Ah, it doesn't even matter. Just tell him what to do. Examine the room. Okay, now I get a good look at this. Yep, that is Weekend at Bernie's. Oh my God, look at this room. This room's insane. All right, so The Mummy, great movie. Stargate, great movie. Bonnie Way! Can't believe I remember that. I saw that with my parents. It was great. Is that Atlantis? Is this a Disney movie? Um, this is an Atlantis Disney movie. Uh, I, 
I don't know if that's it though. Uh, this may be another mummy movie. Yep, it is. Incredible Hulk with uh, Edward Norton. It's going back a ways. Demon. Don't know that one. Uh, Wicked at Bernie's. Yep, that's definitely Bernie's. Uh, Smurfette. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Nice. Avatar. Eh. Didn't like the movie too much. Mystique. Tomb Raider. Also Tomb Raider. Indiana Jones and Crystal Skull. That was a bad movie. Didn't like that one. Another Tomb Raider. Not really sure what this one is. Uh, Nick Cage in... Oh, that's National Treasure. Because that's um Kruger. Elaine Kruger, whatever her name is. She's she's uh, she's uh very hot. Um, Anyway, <laughs> Ghost Rider. Uh, Knight's Tale, great movie. Heath Ledger, legend. That's such a great movie. If you haven't seen that, watch it. Uh, Terminator, also a great movie. Star Wars. Black Knight uh, with Martin Lawrence. Ha haven't seen that one. I've heard of it. Uh, Army of Darkness. Interesting. Knight at Camelot. I think I've seen that one. And a kid in King Arthur's court. Oh my god. Now that's a movie I haven't seen in a very, very long time. Oh man, this, this, this game is bringing back so many memories. Is this a bad thing that it's bringing back all these memories? Or is this a good thing that I, I know this stuff? <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm geeking out of here. Your name is Jake. You love movies. All movies. You would describe your taste in film as eclectic, but in truth, it isn't much less than totally indiscriminate. You bluster frequently of exuberance for firearms and fisticuff and adventure, though I have no human company with which to share these interests. But who needs chums when you can enjoy a top-notch gander of your gals of cerulean complexion? Hubba hubba! <laughs> oh my god. You're known to be fo uh, found with your nose in a comic book or two, not that it makes you a nerd or anything, like you even care about that. Not a gent of your panache and swagger. Qualities which you would bandy with aplomb on your globe-spanning adventures, hypothetically speaking, of course. You will love to travel around the world, tumbling any sacred urns you encountered. You'd be tickled by the opportunity to file hollow tombs everywhere, raiding them other treasures, and how you give your right leg for a shot at desecrating the heck out of some real-life mystic ruins for the Byzantine wares. Luckily for your limb, there's a dandy set of such runes nearby, and you desecrate them quite frequently. You're also troubled to contemplate frightening fauna and plagued daily by the regrettable realness attribute. What else? Uh, you sure like to wrestle. Did you mention fisticuffs yet? You know, scrums and whatnot. Also, skulls. Oh my gosh, you love skulls. There is a good skull at the heart of every mystery, haunting its every page. That is what you always say, or at least that is what you always hope. What will you do? So that's why I like to say, uh, the the, the Crystal Skull movie, whatever that's called. Um, Ann Jones in the Kingdom of Crystal Skulls, I think it was. Eh, I wasn't a fan of that one. Uh, Jake, retrieve arms from floor post haste. Uh, you make a... Okay, that was weird. You make a dutiful motion towards your fussy, uh, trusty firearms during your part to assail the mushy carcass of a horse that passed away long ago. When suddenly, a wild character select screen appears! I thought it was a pair. Sorry, I totally butchered that word. You really feel like you are in the driver's seat now. You can basically taste the soy literally anywhere. As long as you don't pick one of those shadowy characters, as long as the panels are actually finished, you know, being drawn. It's like the whole panoramic cornucopia of limitless possibilities falling before your very eyes. What do you want to be? I want to be this dude. I can't. No, won't let me. <laughs> How about this one? Nope. Can't. It's, wow, they're like in the middle of the ocean. Uh, just left is always right, is what I like to say in a lot of my games, so we'll go left. Yeah, you are suddenly Jane again. What was it that you were up to? All right, this game. You're excited about that. Earlier this morning, you thought you heard the mail truck, even though the mail never comes in the morning, but just be sure you rush downstairs to check. Even though due to recent events, you are forbidden from leaving the house. Alas, it was not there. And you sort of spaced out at the sky with a goofy grin on your face for no great reason. And then you were caught red-handed by your guardian. Then you got in trouble. You think you might be grounded now? Whatever, dad. Examine the fetch modus. Recipe. It's your recipe modus, an extremely handy little inventory widget your dad got for you for your birthday a couple years ago. He can be a real hard butt sometimes, not really, but he sure knows how to spoil his little girl. Capsule log it. Bop, bop.
You stick the recipe modus in your, um, uh, recipe modus, of course. <laughs> you flip the card over and look at the back. The thing about this modus you think is really cool is that instead of showing a completely useless wobbly garble code on the back, it, it itemizes the components which could be used to create it in a completely hypothetical framework, of course. Just another wonderful innovation by your favorite company. It releases many products of an experimental nature, often with applicability to other kinds of technology and products which haven't hit the market yet. Of course, as the heiress, you are privy to all this sweetest gear in advance. Maybe I'll rummage through some of that stuff later. The modus as a capsule lock object has only one simple recipe involving an array modus. Snore. And a cookbook. Yes! Other objects have more varied and elaborate recipes, though. Get the hat. Boing. So we have the Sasuke book and meat. Gun and hat. Huh? Ooh, look at all that. You capsule log your favorite hat, which is your only hat. You spent basically your entire childhood in this hat, pretending to be hard-boiled detectives and whatnot. In public, you and your dad make quite the pair. Everyone could tell by a glance that you were your father's daughter, sired from his loins directly and genetically, though what was undoubtedly a natural process by human procreation involving a man and a woman. People would definitely nod and say, yep, that little lady sure did emerge from womb on account of that gentleman's awesome virility. Jeez. As you can see, there are loads of ways to cook up a hat like this involving many stupid combinations of random objects. Inspect posters. Oh, it's Jeff Foxworthy. Right. And I feel like I've seen these guys before. It's one of your funny men pinups, a glorious Foxworthy. It's one interest that overlaps with your dad's. He thinks his corny redneck shtick is just the funniest thing since sliced bread. That was sliced by a hilarious clown with a laugh knife. Honestly, you don't care how much for his comedy, though. Dealing the low-income bucolic classes, affectionate sass on nauseam isn't what you call your cup of tea. You just think he's really handsome. Every time he starts filing all pointers on how to self-diagnose bumpkinhood, you just get lost in that pair of blue twinklers and those soft auburn lip bristles. You were so shy when he got the poster autographed. If only you felt worthy of that fox. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, and there's one of your palm soup posters. You got a lot of palm soup stuff because you think detective stories are just so swell. This was the last panel in the first story, which ended a little bit before your 13th birthday. Since then, the author has been steadily updating Palm Suit 2, which you have been following avidly. You are happy that he stayed in that lane and stayed with a time-tested formula. If you went in a different direction, you probably would have found it rather disappointing. I think uh, Palm Smooth, uh, isn't uh, Sunfire Jr. mentioned this before? Pose as a team. The world is real. Oh, it actually looks like our uh, team. You're one of the top problem suits in the city. Solicitations for your service on Mr. Kwani. Compensation adequate. It is a blandly summer night. You are feeling particularly horrible night. What will you do? Should I read this? Quickly retrieve your arms from safe. You've already got arms, numb nuts. Two of your gun, there are teams rescued. You're quite positive there has never been a gun in your office and never will be. Frankly, the notion strikes you as reckless and foolhardy. Break through glass with fists to unlock door. You don't know why you're assuming the door will be locked. You don't usually keep the door to your office locked. Nevertheless, a guy this hard boiled doesn't go mess around with totally unmanly things like knobs. He's sending mini fist glass word. This kind of reminds me of Sam and Max. It seems that whenever was a glass element to the door, it was just a piece of paper taped to it. Take the piece of paper. The piece of paper was added to your inventory. Yeah, I mean, it almost looks like a point and click adventure. Man held the doorknob. There are dames who rescued. The door is locked. Funny, you don't remember locking it. Call the world locksmith. I do want to know, though, how long is this story? Oh, my God, it's 1,600 pages. Okay, yeah, we don't have, uh, we're not going to be able to read all this. Um, maybe one of the days we'll go back to this. Uh, let me know what you think of going through this story, because this story looks like it will take a long time. Check out the other posters. I do like how at least I was able to see how it was kind of like Sam and Max, though. What is that? Another sooth poster, of course. With two of your favorite teams ever. The Tobias in Manhattan were gift for your 14th birthday. Said to you by your good buddy Jake. Just a couple of periwinkle heartthrobs unquestionably set in 
playful retaliation of the ribbing they've given him over the years for his inexplicable infatuation with his patholo femmes. So he made a couple of coy recommendations for objects of your attraction, and you have hung his cobalt beef cakes here since. He was pretty spun on with the blue funk, to be honest, since that's like the best show ever. Mr. Cross can blue himself any time, and as far as you are concerned. But the Manhattan, not so much. Comics aren't really your thing, but you hung it up anyway because that's the sort of thing you do in a mildly escalating feud of passive-aggressive one-upmanship. You own it. But you felt kind of weird about having his blue man- <laughs> The blue moon- <laughs> But you felt kind of weird about having his blue mutant penis dangle over your head while you sleep. So you covered it up with something even more obscene. Some sort of revolting troll Howie Mandel also given to you by Jake. So that's what that is. Good lord, does that kid have some pretty spotty taste. There's also a magnificent Swanson. Rod Swanson is the perfect man. Yeah, I try to order all the bacon eggs at a restaurant on several occasions, but your dad never lets you order go beyond the joke level. What a fuddy daddy. I don't know if I know him. Is he from the office? I'm unsure. Take spoon. Sorry? Uh, Specubus, uh, Strike Specubus, spoon kind. You tuck your trusty Junior Battle Master's Bowl Buster Storing Solution 50,000 into your Strife deck. Allocate it with the ever martially pragmatic spoon kind. You wouldn't have it any other way. You love your fancy spoon. It has several million recipes stored in it and walks you through each step with a soothing female robot voice. Just like in science fiction. Some urban legends say that the device also broadcasts subliminal messages to b distributing omnius propaganda. But you don't put any stock in that sort of baloney for a second. There's one switch on that doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe yours is effective. Still, it's pretty serviceable. And has assisted you in whipping many a cake into delicious submission. Examine the bunnies. Aww. These customized bunnies were gifts to you you on your 13th birthday, from two of your friends. Both were heirlooms passed down to them, and they decided to coin gift ideas and send you dressed up versions of the beloved childhood toys. You like to think you were shooting for a decorated bunny with the one on the left, but you know realistically it was probably an Indiana Jones bunny more in line with his interests than yours. Especially since it came with a little whip you sits have misplaced. The bunny used to belong to his grandma. The other one used to belong to your friend's mom, and she dressed as a wizard which was also unapologetically more representative of her interest than yours. I mean, that's okay, though. You love their gesture anyway. And you and she are totally BFFCs forever Zs. Her words. And you agree with them. You did get one more bunny from your other pal. He had to make it himself from scratch. Since for some ridiculous reason, he didn't happen to have a ratty old bunny heirloom lying around. His gift was somewhat less innocuous. You have no idea what it is, though. It's probably just as well. Look out the window. You've been fidgeting around your room all day, making little observations about your various belongings. Checking the clock, when will the dang mail get here? Take another peek out the window, just in case. It's still not there, but there is your dad. What's he up to? Looks exactly the same as the other dad. He just capsule logged the car! Oh, that's right. He was going to wash it today. He's probably taking it back in the backyard next to the garden hose. He gives a very busy father itinerary. So many dad things to do every single day. If the mail arrives soon, this will be a great opportunity to stick out and get it. Fingers crossed. So can everyone capture log here? Looks like somebody is bothering you. You better make it quick. You got a window to stay glued to. Go to the computer. Petty bother. Chimera, Pester Chum. You know you really switch, should switch to Pester Chum. It's what your friends use, and it's a lot better than Betty Bother. If you're being honest with yourself, BB is just so spammy and annoying with all the pop-ups everywhere. Ugh, look at this dreadful clutter. Yeah, I've got to switch, but then brand loyalty is a powerful thing. It's like Jake is messing you. Hamburg Helper, be the first to visit Mars. Betty Bother, BC Corp, and... Is that that chef guy? Don't know his name. Oh, 11, 11 at 11 o'clock. Answer Jake. What are you wearing? Oh my God, look at this. His helmet is exactly the same as his shirt. That's dedication right there. 
All right, so we have Golgotha's Terror. Ah, oh, Golgotha's Terror began pestering Gutsy Gumshoe. So Jane Crocker is known as Gutsy, with lowercase g. And Jake English is Golgotha's Terror. And she is green. Um, and he, oh wait, sorry. She is teal and he is green. Cool. Uh, Jane, get my botherations. I know this is meant to be a spanking rip sort of a day for you and all. But do you happen to know where the double heck Dickens Mr. Strider might be? Oh, that's fine. I had been meaning to message you sooner, actually. But I suppose in all the hubbub today, it plumps up my mind, which is a shocking fact on its lonesome, considering what I had to tell you. Again, Mrs. Color a bit. As for this Strider business, hmm, he's an elusive guy, Jake. You know that. Strider? I talked to him yesterday. That's as much help as I can be. Eh, yeah, shoot. Really need to ask him something, but he's got his blasted autoresponder turned on. Ho ho, I love that thing. He wouldn't be pleased to hear you say that. What do you need him with? Does this have to do with your crazy pen pal project? It almost certainly does. Time is of the essence. Today is the day I had to finish it and send it. Not a day later. So you see why I'm feeling really friggin' discombobulated at the moment. Sorry, Jay. This would be the birthday present for your grandmother? No. It's for your grandfather simply to be relayed to him by my grandmother. A joint gift to him from she and I. Her and me? What? Who and who now? A joint gift from her and me. Grammar, Jake. Oh, for fake's freaking flippin' flippin' sake, Jane. There's no time for your prudish pedantry. Leave your bookish malarkey in a dusty old library somewhere. I have an adventure to get on with. So, if I have this straight, the big thing hanging up your plate today is not the marvelous new game which I have invited you to play with me, but finishing a robotic rabbit to give to my dad, Pop-Pop? Bingo! Double pisses the wink. You're a very strange and silly boy. Please, Jane. We have addresses. I am sending the gift back in time to when they are both alive and about our age. Or something like that. Something funny is going on here that I have not fully grappled yet. But dang nabbit if I'm not going to see it through. Well, Godspeed then. I do hope that you can pull it off. Are you being fresh with me now? No. Look, Jane, I know you never believe me, and you think everything I say is some big cockamamie goof off, but I think today, of all days, is when you should start taking things some more seriously. Especially since I have always had your back. I have always believed in you. Hey, I have believed in you too. However, believing somebody isn't the same thing as believing in somebody. But that much said, I think you... Maybe that I'm getting ready to believe some of the wild stories I've heard. Or, if not believe outright, reserve judgment to, at least. Well, is that so? I don't know. I'm still not sure what to think. But what I wanted to tell you this morning was, I had a really wild dream last night, and you were in it. Oh my! Glasses fell out, fumbles for kerchief. Shh! Not like that. It was so real. I think we weren't in the game, even though we hadn't started playing yet. I don't know what to make of it, whether it was a vision of the future, or someone that exists now, or if it was just a really lucid dream due to excitement. Well, what was I doing there? Um, not a heck of a lot. I really want to tell you all about it, but it will take some time to explain, and we both have things to attend to. You, with your time-traveling rab orc, and I, my vigilant window-gazing. That's too true. Let us reconvene later and sort out all this stuff at a leisurely place. Yes, okay. Good luck, Jake. Okay, you too, Jane. Bye. Go go to Sarah's seas, bothering Gutsy Gumshoe. Check the cock. Hold the phone. 1110. You almost forgot. One minute until the, emperor, the Empire's rebranding launch. You wonder if it will live up to the hype? Guess I'll find out. Wait a minute. You ride out another 60 seconds and, huh? Something happened to your baking chest. Did the logo just change? You wonder what else might have been affected. Hmm. Look around.
Yeah, it's over here too. Alpha. Yep, this one changed too. Crocker Cop, Crocker Corp is nothing if not Thor with its branding tactics. You guess it's pretty cool? It's just a fork instead of a spoon. More like a spork. Not the most awe-inspiring logo you've ever seen. But who would you judge? Aside from the future owner of the company. Yeah. You make a mental note that when you turn 18 and inherit the company, will change it back to a spoon because you love the spoon. Examine the bullbuster. Hmm. Sure enough, the Junior Battle Master's Bullbuster Stirring Solution 50,000 has been affected too, along with the Specubus. We're now four kinds. Try flipping switch. Now it became a spoon. It goes between spoon kind and fork kind. Oh, how about that? You try the book and switch again. Hey, look, it does something now. Toggling your trusty bolt buster spoon between a stirring solution and a poking solution. Neat. Back to the window. Nope, still nothing. You surely would have heard the truck pull up. You guess Empire wasn't able to coordinate the mail with its rebanding. Maybe the U.S. Postal Service is the one thing it doesn't have its gnarled claws in yet. Another mental note. Seek gnarled claws at the postal office when you take over. <laughs> Open the chest. You decide to pass the time by rummaging through your bacon chest and... Hang on. Maybe later. Answer. Who the heck is Iranian Umbra? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know who this is. I don't know if it's male, female, or what. So, Iranian Umbra. Gray. It's too many voices in this game. I'm going to have to start repeating people just because I don't have infinite voices. Good morning, lovely. Ooh. Why, hello. So I guess today is finally the day you make everything better. Huh? It is a day where after the legendary octet of Mu, Tulo, Pogenitor, and Terry will come together and heal a great branch of Paradox Space. A day delivered through 80 billion years and four distinct universal instances worth of unfathomable turbulence. And while the Emerald Eye of the storm is fixed in the abyss forever, today, you are poised to escape its scowl once and for all. By sky's guiding light, you may live, leap beyond its turning arms of bright colors and mayhem, and secure peace for your cosmic progeny for all duration. And if you are to meet with this departure with the trepidation, I would understand, but I would also ask, is there nothing I could do to erase your mind or ease your mind? Gosh, so formal today. Yes, oh, I'm afraid I'm guilty of rehearsing this pep talk well in advance. I thought you deserved a proper send-off. Duh. Well then, is there anything I could do? It was a serious question. Ooh. You didn't worry about erasing my ease my nerves. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be nearly as thrilled about it today as I am. Oh, splendid, ooh, but remember I will be here to help. While us refraining from casual spoilers to the best of my ability. That is reassuring. Have you corresponded with your first designated co-player yet? No, I haven't seen her online yet today. I'm really hoping Lalonde will flick out on me this time. Have you heard from her? Yep, there was uh, Lalonde. It was interesting because uh, her name is Crocker and Jake's name is English. But yet we also have Lalonde and, um, and uh, Dave's family as well. Oh, where was I at? Um, not that today that's local to Yule. Though I have a wee bit more trouble monitoring her than the rest of Yule. Curious, dark patches of transmission, hump. Still, I want in front of it. She as good as a charm as any you have, and you should come through, ultimately, even if things seem dire. If you say so, oh, I want to tell you, I had an amazing dream last night. Blimey! I believe it may have been the sort that you described. A dream of me awakening, presuming I hadn't just flat out lost my marbles. Indeed, I'm sure it was you. I knew you would wake up soon. Might you describe what you saw? It was a bright gold city, 
Above was a brilliant blue sky, but the horizon was dark at night. Was this the place you told me about? What was it called? Ah, shucks, does this count as a casual spoiler? Not at all. That is a simple detail about the realm you are about to explore without directly involving your future decisions of consequence. The place you visited was called Pospit. It is where I have woken up every time I have gone to sleep for most of my life. I didn't see you there. At least, I didn't think I did. No, you wouldn't have. My prospect is an alternate version from yours in a completely different session quite far off field of your reality. If we are ever to meet in person, it is unlikely to be while playing our respective games. Okay then, I mentioned this briefly to Jake, and he didn't have much to say before we parted ways. I will gather that if this is all true, then it means Jake had not awoken yet. I think this is for you to determine in time. What is your hunch? I don't know. But there was one thing about the dream that was very troubling. I'm becoming nervous to consider what it might mean. Understandable, but it will be important to practice patience today. You have a long road ahead of you, and many questions will be answered in time. But we can talk it over later now. Now, we both have games to prepare for. I know you could never fully appreciate what this actually meant, but I took much care to sync up these conversations with you on the same day that I began playing as well. That way, we could journey through our sessions together and compare notes. Oh, come. I'm still not sure I appreciate what that means, but I appreciate that a nice gesture has been made if you say so. I guess I should just stop believing all of this now, huh? Rather than learning it to be true later and feeling the fool for all my curmudgeonly skepticism. Oh! For starters, I guess I should drop my reservations about your story. Will you? I can write off much to tomfoolery as I'm no stronger to a good pick myself. But quite honestly, you seem too kind for this charade. Not the type I'd expect to trot out such persistent falsehood beyond their human welcome. So what do I know? Concern it. Maybe you are an alien girl from Yonis. And together, we are about to play a game which determines the fate of existence. Well, sign me up. Oh, hee hee. But I never claimed to be from that planet, which is only in the far reaches of your solar system. In fact, I am from much farther away. A different universe altogether. But if you truly mean it, thank you for believing me. Now, Jane, my lovely, let us prepare for this adventure. Remember what I said about the need for patience? Patience with your friends? Patience for your, for your growth as a life of hero? And patience for the coming of the other four of legend? A hero of breath and of light and of time and of space. And if you still find yourself in doubt, just check the inscription on the big old book downstairs. After all, if you can't trust words written by your own hand, then what use is trust at all? Oh, kisses! <laughs> Rainy Umbers, <laughs> you're in gutsy gumshoe. Oh, good lord. Okay, back to Jess. By the way, I feel really stuffy today, so if you hear me, like, sniffling or something, my apologies. My apologies. Uh, back to the chest. Oh, we got the um comic mask. You return to your bacon chest, which you use mainly for storing quality prank apparatus and a few other odds and ends. Oh, hello, Papa. His friendly face is there to greet you every time you open the chest. You would have loved to meet him. Unfortunately, his life was cut short at the tender age of 86 in a tragic accident. Papa Cocker was a legendary comedian. Following in the footsteps of his grandfather, who of course was the greatest southern prank and legend of all time. One day, you hope to follow and pop up too. But then, if the Whoppers have been told recently have any truth to them, maybe we'll get to meet him after all. It seems too good to be true. The only relationship you ever had with him are through video footage of his bald violin antics on stage. Or through his role as Judge Johnny Stone on one of your favorite old sitcoms, Night Court. Rummage around. Sword? Book? Magic hat? A game station? Pony Pals? A TR? Just your basics when it comes to pranking. A few clever disguises, a name brand dunce cap, a slightly abridged edition of Sasuke's text, updated for the modern prankster and scrubbed a few of the more egregious julep-fueled racial slurs, several other stray books, your company's prototypical model for the Gris Widget 12,000, 
And of course, your super handy Unreal Eris Thought Wave Terror Top and the young Go Getting Junior Battlemaster on the go. Dump the chest. <laughs> I was about everything goes scattering. Might as well get all this garbage out of here and take it with you. You never know when you might need it. You shut the chest and oh, hello, Harry Anderson. Always a pleasure to see you there. He is also one of your idols and as it happens, has a bit of history with your pop-pop. They were rivals on the vaudeville comedy and magic at circuit. Eventually, the less competent Anderson was shamed out of the industry and went on greener pastures in the private dicking biz. He became one of the hardest bold detectives on the mean streets of the Big Easy and later made a fortune off his memoirs. Ghost, written by Mike Cavaney. Caps log all. Wow! <laughs> Your Silidex is so great. You should have remember some of the old, horrible fetch money you used to struggle with when you were younger. Still learning the caps log and ropes. Fibonacci heap. Lol at the effing noob. Spec the books. Wise guy? Pony pals? Heck yeah. You have a cookbook, which of course was meant absolutely by a computerized talking bull buster. You want to day apart with it though, too many wonderful memories. There's Anderson's aforementioned book, Wise Guy. His Cavanese stories are gripping, in a way. And then there's a customized copy of Pony Pals, a gift to you on his 14th birthday from the slippery Mr. Strider. Each page contains lovely handwritten commentary on the deeds of this intrepid young horse. That thing's a piece of junk. It just wastes your boon dollars and destroys your cool gear to produce these stupid things that look like gushers. Well, like gushers, which serve many practical purposes like inducing vomiting and simulating the experience of eating plump insects, these things are totally useless. It's just the hack card. Oh, that was cool. Okay, you'll try it out with one of your less prized possessions just to prove how dumb it is. You never like this hat much. It makes you look like a gnome and basically isn't funny at all. You pop the card in. The grist widget indicates that it will cost $10 good dollars to convert this object into grist. That's not too bad, you guess. It's not like the currency has much value anyway. It has produced a sort of BC Corp fun box to be used by youngsters, specifically on qualifying merch online and stuff. Brilliant business strategy, really. As heirs to the Empire, you are naturally endowed with millions, which you have a reputation for being very generous with. You have been considering using your wealth to set up a scholarship fund to allow underprivileged kids to go to Boone College. Activate. See? <laughs> Idly used pointless. You hope Crocker Corp was going somewhere with this technology, because if not, this product is first in line for getting the axe when you're in charge. Where are the tiara top? Aww. Aww. You put on your highly fashionable, unreal, heiress thought way of tiara top and flip it on. It immediately hums to life as its blazing fast processes mingle with your thoughts. It's the most efficient computing technology in the world by far, as long as you don't wear it for too long. But aside from a few migraines, you can't possibly imagine any drawbacks that cease reproduction could come with. Submit merging. Oh, wait. There's something here. Uh, you can't possibly... <laughs> Stupid white text. Here we go. But aside from a few migraines, you can't possibly imagine any obeyed drawbacks that cease production could come with submit Merging, consume your thoughts with a brace you're calling experimental technology, conform to social order from an insane, extremely powerful die corporation. Wait, what? <laughs> Let's see if we can just read the white. Obey, cease production, submit, consume, embrace your calling, uh, conform to social order, stay asleep, and die. You know what that kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, the movie They Live. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. It's great. It's got Roddy Roddy Piper in it. And it's basically a movie where aliens kind of take over. And uh, if you use these sunglasses, you can see what the world really looks like. Continue Vigilant Window Gaze. I don't know what that has to do with the movie. It just reminded me of it. All hail, new Chief Justice. US what? Obey, obey, obey. Okay. <laughs> now that sort of remind me of They Live. Because in They Live, they have the signs that say obey. Still no sign of the mall. Might as well keep the tear top on while you look, even if it means suffering through all these BS pop-up ads. The way you can keep an eye out for Lalonde while you're at it. Speak of the Devil Dickens. Answer Lalonde. Aw, it's got the cat. <laughs> Tipsy Nostalgic. Alright, so we do know this is Lalonde, though. We don't know who it is, but we know it's Lalonde. Um... 
yeah, we know this is Lalonde, and her name is in pink, hot pink, tipsy, nostalgic. Sure, right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what should we give her? I don't, I don't know. Just go with it. Jane. Hey, Janie. Answer it, please. I mean, answer. Jane. OMG. Overreact much? I kept you waiting for all of two seconds. Where have you been today? Nowhere. Just chilling here. When all of a sudden, all of a sudden, when all of a sudden, it hits me. Daph, we have something really important to talk about. This hits you just now. We made plans to get in touch earlier this morning, and I have seen neither height nor hair of you all day. It hits me that. Jake's birthday is coming up really soon. Just a few days before mine, remember? Well, I guess it would be if it wasn't for the end of the world. That's, you know, about to happen. Oh, for Pete's sake. I just want your advice on what to get him. Something sentimental, I guess. But, I mean, I'm mostly tapped out of precious heirlooms at the moment, so I don't know. But not like anything coming on too strong. Something that says... This is totes platonic and everything. No, I brought raising funny business going on over here, but still says you know. Call me if you want it. Grr. Now I know you're joking around to get my goat. Ha, huh, yeah. The goat getting thing, I mean. But joking? Oh, no, I think not. You don't think that if I did say it was off limits on account of you being my best friend, I wouldn't be all over that? Dang! That rugged sense of adventure, the delightful, silly vernacular that's like really and bewitchingly not self-aware, those adorable teeth, oh. So... No. Stop. Well, duh, Jane. What am I supposed to do? I can't hit on everybody, and apparently I can entertain nearly a frisky thought about anybody because apparently everybody is off limits! But your gosh dang typos! Stuff sucks! You don't even let me say your dad is hot, even though we both know he's way the heck. I, I mean, come on. One, on, on, on. Ah! Yeah, but it's weird, and you're drunk. Collection, drinking, presidents, grandma Jane. I don't see why you don't try to court the favor of Mr. Stider. If you ask me, he and you are perfect for each other. Oh, Jane, so naive, so nieve. Lordy, how can it be this far gone so early? It is even noon yet. You forget, we live in a very different time zone. It's a lot later here. You're three hours ahead of me. You'd be so much amazed. How much can happen in like three hours? Tisk, what would your mother have to say if she caught you? Ah, uh, she sure wouldn't give a heck. I mean, she's the one who stacked the gas dang darn liquor cabinets in the first, first place. I, I don't think she ever had a drop in her life, probably. So why else is she putting it there? It was like a passive-aggressive dare for me? A aggressive? Aggressive? J just the sort of mind game that she would play, you know? So, even if your insane and paranoid theory happens to be true, your response is, screw it. Time to help myself to all this mind game booze. Yep! <laughs> Mocha. Groan. You are completely impossible like this. I cannot believe you chose to do this today of all days. I should have known better. Here I am waking up bright and early, waiting all day with my nose pressed against this glass for the mail to come and wondering if you'll ever log on. And while the while, you are just getting blind sticking schnocker bottom drunk. What you're waiting for? In the mail, is like something happening today or something? Ah, the alpha! Jeez, Louise, you are hopeless. Oh, yeah, that thing. Are you at all ready to play if it comes? Uh, I mean, I guess, but you, you sure you even want to play sing? You know, it's just like, what the matter, which ones you to do? Not this again. If you want to go ahead and be a champ, Jane, just call you, I'm saying. I, I know what a chump looks like, and you don't look like no chump I ever saw. If you go through with all this, I'll, I have to add you to profile to my chump ball. I mean, my profile, I mean, my profile, whatever. Which is like, this real actual thing I maintain. It's, it's, it, in the end of being a joke. Is that what art you want? I mean, want? Uh, what the? Ah! The Battle Witch does not exist. It's an idiotic urban legend. How many times have I explained this? My great great grandmother, who founded the company, is accused of holding this identity, would have to be almost 20 years old if she were still alive today. The idea is such preposterous hogwash. It's hardly worth dignifying with a rational response. The iconic face of the company isn't even a real person. She was fabricated long ago during the company's fledgling years. Right, as you know, an alter ego, or something more sinister. Such cuckoo bird nonsense. 
In any case, I don't understand the nature of the second guessing besides chalking up to your unwelcome inebriation. We had agreed you would play with me. You sounded excited about it. Have you even obtained your copy yet? Um, <laughs> yes, obtained. Sure did. Through your various technologically cryptographic means, I presume. Ah, oh, you bet. I hacked the stuff out of these tight mainframes and all. Said jackpot like a bunch of times, all those ciphers of booby traps, backdoor treasure to whatnot were no match for my gold sticker. Ah. <laughs> uh. I am quizzically narrowing my eyes to trying to solve the joke you're attempting, assuming it even is one. Okay, Jane, what I'm saying is that, in the parlance of barking, because I know what it is you get off on, is that it was a cakewalk. 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 Ah! Oh, like by which, I mean not to say, her, her, I'm the hottest stuff hacksaw you've ever known, as daily to the corporate goody, but she is beautiful. Which I am, but what, what I mean is the stuff wasn't even guarded. It was just some files that were there, unsecured, and I took them, jacked them right off of the interweb telemetries, and then applied lipstick, femme fatale style. I was like, heck yes! I all kinds of know how to use my web browser to totally download several files. Really? Yeah. So now, I, I got it. If you really want to play, which you shouldn't. Hmm, that is a bit puzzling. I thought this stuff for it was highly proprietary. I told you, she wants you to play. What's all us to? It's part of her big plans. And you're playing right into them, like a show. Um, um, yes, I know. You made yourself clear. But what doesn't add up about your story is, I believe somebody doesn't want me to play. How else do you explain the recent attempts on my life? I don't know. Someone out there wants to take the stock price to take a hit? There. Or it's just more connivings of the witch. So this hypothetical monstrosity wants me to succeed, but also wants me to die. Makes a lot of sense. I want to put it past her. Makes you feel perpescuted. Uh, it doubles your determination play. You advance your plans in whatever incomprehensible way until suddenly you did everything that she needed you to do, at which point you become crazy expendable. Yo, and then she expends you like a wad of boon dollars on some horrible, you know, BC merch. I see. This is sounding less like a crackpot conspiracy theory by the minute. Whatever, alls. I'm saying there's a bunch of stuff that's definitely true to the max. I'll send the file to you, though, and you can do what is up with you. So you want it now, or what? Hmm, it's tempting, but I'm curious as heck to play it. But the mail should be coming any minute. I've waited this long for it, so I might as well use the official disc addressed to me. When it comes, I do hope you'll change your tune. Not to mention, bring yourself a pot of coffee and sober your drug butt up. My drug butt's tune will stay unchanged as long as it remains you're not drunk. Uh, make her my barley, quarter wet words. Ho <laughs> oh, ho, okay, fair enough. But I believe that when we stop playing together, you'll come around. Personally, I can hardly contain my excitement over it. If years ago someone told me, which incidentally someone did, that today I would have an exclusive opportunity to play what is absolutely the most cutting-edge immersive civilization game ever released, developed by a company which has already done so much for advancement of humanity, I would have said, Shucks, Buster. Sign me up. Jane! Yes? Jane! What? Jane, did you know that I'm utterly in love with the fact that I have a best friend who says things like, Shucks, Buster. Shucks, sure, you drunky. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. WTF, the thing, the, the floppy thing. The mail. It's here. The floppy, swingy, doodad, the arm dealy, the dealy, the lawn, the dealy. What? The god darn red swinging floppy lever arm thing about whatever it's called on the mail box. Breathe, Crocker. Slow blast, like this. <laughs> I'm breathing regular for your information. It's up. It's up. It's up. I don't get a lot of mail out there, and I'm no mail expert. Uh, expert. Expert. But does that mean that's not the right thing? Like, you're supposed to put it up if you want something taken away, not like having the guy put it up if the mail comes. I think your mailman is quite possibly a dummy. No, who cares about that? The dealy. The dealy. It's up. It's up! It's here! It's here! It's here! Ah! Lame! So effing oh at this. Ah, beer back! Cease bothering tipsy, uh, nostalgic. Prepare to retrieve the mail. You scam over to the door, but pause a second to think. Is your dad still washing the car? Hopefully he's still preoccupied so he can sink out. But it doesn't hurt to be uh, prepared for an encounter. Luckily, that's exactly what you are. Don, you clever disguise. Oh my god. <laughs> why is that why is that his loving daughter 
or could it be none other than Inspector Jacques Clouseau? Mr. Clouseau, what are you doing in this household? Can I bake your cake? Please, make yourself comfortable while I go about my business, stop being suspicious. But wait, perhaps that is not so much the distinguished Inspector Gusteau as it is. The world-renowned investigator, Hercule Perot! Because the curly mustache is a lot cuter. Aw, it is a lot cuter. The great Perot? In this house? Such an honor. I will set the kettle to boil straight away. Who would have guessed his home would be so heavily trafficked? By the famous French detectives at this time of day. Oh my, the good Perot appears to be clucking little peasantries in his adorable French accent, although the high-pitched voice of an enthusiastic teen girl. I surely don't have the heart to ground this upstanding dapper gentleman no matter how many desolate attempts are made on her life. Yeah, it's a really bad disguise. <laughs> Exit. You make a cautious... Whoa, that was... <laughs> you make a cautious motion towards a beckoning exit knob, when suddenly the same wild character she sees approaches non-threateningly! You know that you still haven't picked one of the shadowy characters, but maybe you haven't been the other guy yet. That means it's still time to click him. Or maybe you already have been, in which case you are done with this thing. The narrative really has no way of knowing. Your butt remains planted in the driver's seat as always. Yep, so we gotta click him. All right, before we be Jake, I'm going to go ahead and take a break. I don't think I'm at a full hour yet, but I had to take like four or five breaks in the middle of this just to just to try to uh, make sure I wasn't sounding too horrible on the mic today. Uh, I'm sorry for the way I sound, but I haven't recorded Homestuck in like a week. And I really want to record Homestuck. So I said, I don't care if I feel all clogged up right now. I'm going to record Homestuck because I really want to do it. <laughs> And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Thank you for everything, my dear friends. I love you all so very much. You know, I just realized that it says 11, 17, 11 here. I, I wonder if we go back to the girl. Did it say 11, 11? I need to go back and look to see if it said 11, 11, 11 on her. Uh, but either way, you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. I will see you again soon. Sorry for the slowness of some of these episodes. I mean, I haven't really done a whole lot of Ace Attorney either. Like I said, when you get clogged, it's harder to do visual novels. It's easier to do RPGs or um, a game like Dead Rising because I don't need to like do as many voices and whatnot. But when you do games like this, it's a lot harder. So bear with me, but I will be back very soon. I love you all so very much. And until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.